People deluded, I'm back again. Pardon my French to any kids watching, but fuck any Arsenal hater. And I'm not talking about those that ask healthy questions of our team and provide a balanced opinion. I'm talking about the moving goalposts. Now, I'll be honest, I don't give a flying monkeys, people. We know how Arsenal portrayed in the media, not just us, but a lot of teams, it's going to be disingenuous. Where Arsenal Football Club is concerned, I do think a lot of our fans are victims. I do think a lot of them do well with me. I do think there's a lot that are conspiracy theories. But even Equally, I think those that talk about Arsenal, and I'm talking about every media house, every content creator, I think they're disingenuous. Not to big up Arsenal or anything like that, but where it comes to social media, us and probably owing to Manchester United under Ten Hag, which is now over, are probably the most talked about football clubs where this sort of content space is. Continue is, and one thing that does frustrate me in life is incorrect narratives. I'm not helping, you know. You can ask healthy questions. You can have positives and negatives and all of that jazz. And I must admit, the more hate we get, the more question marks over our manager, away from the healthy questions, the more they don't rate our players, the more that they move the goalposts. You know, one minute we're naive flying forward, then we're defending and now they've got issues around it. Again, healthy dialogue is always encouraged, people. But I'm not talking about them. The more they do this, the more, regardless of how it ends, you know, I'm Arsenal till I die. It's A's up till he frees up. You know, my, you cut me open, I bleed red. Cliche, I know. But the more they do this kind of stuff, it's the more that I kind of just want it to be us against the world, people. Now, I don't give a flying monkeys what anyone has to say. Nobody can sit there and say Mikel Arteta isn't doing something special and these players aren't bloody good and there's not many things to envy about Arsenal. Now, what I mean by that is, of course, the question is, Mikel Arteta, can you deliver a champs? Can you deliver a Premier League? Can we get over the line? Can we stop being the nearly men? If I believe in what you're doing, good and bad, if, if you're talked about as arguably the second best manager, I don't know where you look at it with Arnslot and what Amarin's going to do at United and all these things, but you're talked about as second best manager or best of the rest or one of the best managers in the game and you know it's what the guy has been in the job like five six years now but in managerial terms he's a baby he's probably not going to be at Arsenal for as long as Arsene Wenger or Alex Ferguson he's going to go off and do great things um He's going to go off and he's going to go off and do great things. Um, the question is, can you win stuff now? I, again, healthy questions at the moment. And I might do a video on it. I think we are to a degree. There's a bit of a handbrake mentally where in the in the final third is. But I think the narrative has probably gone a bit too far because, you know, when have we failed to score goals at any point this season? There's probably one or two games top. We found a way against Villa, found a way against Spurs, found a way against City, found a way against Liverpool. Bearing in mind, we scored the two. We scored the opener against Liverpool and took the lead twice again. Game management, all of those things, there needs to be questions. You know, I don't think Arsenal are at their sparkling best in the final third by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but we wasn't last season and then we clicked into gear. Now, I don't know the reasons for that. As I said, I might do an in-depth video around this, people, because I do think, A, it's impacted by the subs. Two, I do think Mikel Arteta is probably a bit more defensive-minded than he is. Three, I think he doesn't really have faith at this moment in time in us flying forward, but we're still got scoring. We can improve all of this. And obviously there's been injuries. We can still score goals. We still have been scoring goals. You know, you look at our goals, you look at the touches in the up box, you look at all of these metrics, they're still there. And I'm not saying that we can't improve that, but where you look at the narrative and what the data is telling you, you get it. And I think where you look at Arsenal and Liverpool, I think for honest, balanced Arsenal and Liverpool fans, I think the media provided an injustice on the analysis of that game, people, because I think going into it, I think Liverpool probably would have taken, they wanted three points, but they would have taken a point considering what we've done now. I definitely would have taken a point going into the game. Definitely how it went. Of course, you would have wanted to win and, you know, different circumstances, but to kind of at a point be in the driving seat against City and against Liverpool, two teams that are seen as to go with us fighting for the league. Of course you want to win that. But we didn't lose those games. And what people can't sit here and do, and I, I hate it, it's like, the it's like again, I'm Arsenal fans, two truths can live in the same realm. We want us to be a lot better in the final third. But let's be honest, the media is very disingenuous, you know. They want us to just fly forward and be naive, be like Spurs with that high line, you know. And again, I actually think we need to get back to high standards defensively. There has to be a correlation with us getting something out of these games that I've mentioned, with us being higher in the table, with keeping clean sheets and just having a better defensive outlook. Once again, the way we've defended this season, I think, you know, we can go up several gears and we clearly can in an attacking sense. It's like people just want us to fly forward and entertain them. I'm not being funny, but where was you during the early Emirates era where we arguably only Barcelona played better football than us? Barcelona won a lot of major honours. It's fair to say we didn't, did we, people? So the goalposts are always moving, you know, and again, this whole Jose Mourinho, Arteta stuff, it pees me off. Not because he's compared to Jose Mourinho. Mikel Arteta would do lucky to be mentioned in the same realm as, as Jose 
Jose Mourinho come the end of his career. He's a fantastic gaffer. If you want to be a great defensive team, naturally, you're going to look at Jose. But let's be honest, you know, negative football, being defensively sound, it's, it's a prerequisite of, a, of accomplishing things, but it's used as a stick to beat teams with. It's used as in negative ways and, and stuff like that. And that's what people are saying. One minute, Mikel Arteta is a po is a cold manager. Then he's of it. Then one minute, he's, he's Pep. Then he's Jose. Then he's everything. He, I, I don't understand it. And again, there's fair question marks about Mikel Arteta. I think there's a lot to praise about the guy. I think there's a lot of shaky things he's done. You know, I think there's a lot of question marks over our team, good and bad, really. I think it's a mixed bag. But what people can't sit here and do is not say we're not competitive again, not say there isn't something to believe in again, not say, and for me, win, lose or draw, Arsenal's not an easy game. It's not an easy game. Ironically, you know, you look at it and I do think a lot of things so far, this in what we've seen this season in the league and what we saw for the whole of last year, I, 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 at a certain period, I think they're still there. I think, you know, this time last year, I don't think any of us were happy with how we was probably performing in the final third. I think there was a chance creation, let alone chance conversion issue, right? Um, I think, you know, yeah, we could have beat Liverpool, you know, and again, mate, I actually feel the Shakhtar game and the Liverpool game, Mikel Arteta said we lack courage. I do think we could have been a bit more front-footed because it's a bit of a weird one where in, I, I think Arsenal, or I think on top of, pardon me, Mikel Arteta probably being a bit defensively minded owing to the injuries um, and whatnot. I do think, well, I think a lot of it is psychological. I think the vast majority of it is personnel, but I think it's psychological because you look in the, in the City game, when we started to believe we could go forward and we can do a thing and we can present issues... You saw it, you know, when we went 2-1 up, we looked settled. We looked like we was doing a thing. Liverpool in the first half, we did well. Whenever we went forward, we looked quite confident. But equally, we were sitting back at times. And ironically, that's what led to Liverpool actually scoring. We tried to gamble a bit, you know. Yes, on one hand, you could smell blood and go in for the kill. But then you could caveat that by saying you get into an open game against the transition killers like Liverpool, where you've obviously got a lot of injuries and you've got, a, you know, disorganised and dysfunctional and nothing close to your first choice back five, including Raya, you're going to get in trouble. The one time we gambled, Trent did what Trent does. Salah did what Salah does. Credit to Nunes as well for his involvement. It was two, two, two points dropped right at the death, people. So I do think there needs to be a bit more balance, but that's not what sells. That's not what sells on YouTube. Clickbait, rage bait, hyper opinions. This is the, the environment we're in probably owing to you know, you know, to, to human psychology. So I'm all for, you know, I'm all for fair analysis, asking fair questions, but we all know they're vested interests and half of the people don't rate us. You know, people, I think Arsenal are one of the best defensive teams historically in the league at the moment. Statistically, we're not. They'll sit there and say, oh, Spurs only conceded one less than you. Great. But if we really broke that down and look at how they conceded it, when they conceded it and the factors, it'd be very different. And it's silly, you know, Haaland's obviously scored a lot of goals, but I'm pretty sure there's players that have also scored a lot of goals in the Premier League that come the end of the season are going to be nowhere near Haaland for goals scored. And the same said for clean sheets with Arsenal. So again, in conclusion, fair question marks are always are always asked. That's what we live in, fair debate. But all of the disingenuous rhetoric, try and ignore it, people, and fuck it. And, and again... Once again, we can have fair questions because Mikel Arteta, you've rebuilt the club. You've done a lot of mad things and a lot of things I admire you with. The question mark now is, can you get to a league title? Can you get a Champions League? I always say, and I got a lot of heat for saying this on TalkSport, I think the Champions League is impossible. I think the Premier is improbable. Now, if I could speak on my own platform, what I specifically mean by that is, I don't know about you lot people, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stubborn bastard in my life, like... Even doing YouTube, there's a million reasons as to why this won't work, it can't work. I think of the one reason it can. It's us against the world, and that's how I look at the Champions League. I don't think Arsenal can win the Champions League. I don't think we've got the individual brilliance. I don't think we've got the street smartness, and we're still getting our feet wet. That being said, it's a game of football. It's not Formula One. It's not Gladiator. On the day, anyone can beat anyone. Get a touch of fortune, and I want to get in the final. I describe the Prem as improbable just because... I personally think we're 90, 95 percent of the way there, but I don't think we've got the difference makers and all the other talking points that we could get into. For me to 100 percent say we're going to win the league, I think we can run it quite close. But I think you know, with the, the the playing squad, with the injuries, you know, with with you know, with how small our side is, with what the them robots at Manchester City are doing, I think it's improbable. But go all the way and definitely where Arsenal used to be to where we are now. I'm happy with this. Now, the issue I feel with Arsenal fans now, and I'm talking to just Arsenal, there's no balance. Mikel Arteta, you need to sack him if he doesn't win a title. I can't, 
I'm not saying not to do that because if you presented someone that can do what Arteta can do and that we've got more confidence in him winning the Premier League, then unfortunately Arteta is where it is regardless of the new the new contract. But then I feel and more so I'm only 29 and I'm not being disingenuous to younger fans, but I do think for a while during the Emirates era, this is the best Arsenal football club have been, you know, in terms of in the league because you could caveat that and say, you know, would you rather Arsene Wenger's last five years or Mikel Arteta's five years or however so far? Many people point towards trophies and even the trophy rhetoric, it, it, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, you know. Trophies are all we really care about and what we and what we want to win, you know, but they're not always a fair reflection of how our season's gone. They're all you're going to remember in history, 100%. You know, we've been better in the league under Mikel Arteta. We was a joke in the league in the last years under Wenger, but we did win trophies. And that's what Arteta says himself in terms of winning trophies. And that's where we need to go to because, again, I'm, I don't know about you lot, but I'm not on this just challenging thing. I like it. I like what we're doing, but, you know, it's like it's like... Big up the galley out there, but it's like that. It's like me, you know, finding a nice lady. Uh, we get on, you know. She's got all the stuff I look for from a woman physically, mentally, all of that, and same way, same. It's like me finding several women like that, and I'm never closing the deal. I'm not getting married. I'm not getting in relationships. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not doing nothing. I don't want to be the bridesmaid and always the groom. But there needs to be balance. Now, the question that will be said at the end of the season is, oh, if Mikel Arteta doesn't win the title, do you, you have to sack him? And again. There is some truth to that because I'll tell you, it would have been three years now. What go on for this now? What's going on? Can we try something else? Now, we know he's not going to get sacked. And, and I'm not saying he should. Unless you finish eighth, a madness happens or, or, or something crazy out of context just happens. If you finish in the top three positions, respectable run in the in, in, in the Cups, you might save face. And obviously, they've gave him a new deal. And they still rightly so believe in Arteta. But I think there has to be healthy question marks. And it can't always be next season, next season, next season. Are we winning, trying to win stuff? Or are we watching Netflix documentaries or something? It can't always be next year, next next year next year um so i think there's fair question marks i think we're ticking in the right regards but fundamentally you know we need a siege mentality and i think for arsenal fans stop seeking validation from others really they have vested interests you know they're going to ask things that are you know to to annoy you and again i'm not speaking about the arsenal fans or the football fans that generally apply balance and ask healthy questions we all know where you know the big up you lot listening because you're part of the minority people so yeah, man, there's a lot to buy into, but it feels like, you know, we need to get over that line. Now. Well, it's not even that it feels we need to get over that line. And I must admit, even for me, just as an ignorant fan, not looking at the transfer business of not knowing what Edu and Arteta are trying to do. For me as a fan, an ignorant fan, my job is not necessarily to care what you're doing in the, in the offices, what you're doing. My job is just to care about what I see on the football field. I would have thought, and again, I'm not an accountant, but you look at the last two years, and I did think the additions in the summer were good, but you look at the last two years, you flirted with City, and you could do what I'm about to say, people, and it might not get over the line, but you could do what you've done against City, ultimately not won the league title, but had a good, fair push of it, you know, improved year in, year out. I thought you could have sat there in the summer and said, you know what? Nothing to do with Kai Havertz, but go out there and get that striker that boosts us. Go out and get that left winger. Go out and get everything. We didn't quite have that. Big up Califuri, Mikel Moreno, and everyone we signed, really. But I could argue a team that, as I, what I just said, you don't scramble on the last day of the season finding a backup goalie or running around for a past it Raheem Sterling. Big up the Gaza, man. You know, you, you look a lot better on the left-hand side, as I've been saying, like against Preston than you did in the first, even though... I don't think you were terrible in the first, but I think he was probably the lowest rated player. But yeah, man, stop seeking validation um, from those who have no regards for Arsenal Football Club or don't want a balanced debate. You know, they say being a good def they say we're a defensive side, like that's a bad thing. Like one nil from the Arsenal came out of nowhere. And, you know, they say they make this narrative. And I, I again, in terms of balance, there's question marks to ask about how we defend anyways and actually about how defensive we've gone. But look at the statistics, where the goals are, where the penalty final box entries are. All of these statistics point towards it. You even look at the Arsenal-Liverpool game, where not necessarily Liverpool fans, they're making out that we just sat back, which we only really did that in the second half and we respected Liverpool where they had to be respected. And obviously we haven't got our stronger team out. Naturally, when Gabriel... With Gabriel on, we was kind of, you know, wasting time in that. But when Gabriel came off, there was a real handbrake. But you look at the statistics, the shots on target, the shots, the possession... It shows a fairly balanced game. It's not like Arsenal sat back and whatnot. And half these people that couldn't give a crap about Arsenal and wanted to banter us. Why do you want us to play? A Why do you actually want us to play attacking football? We want to see attacking football because you want everything. You know, I'm a, I'm 29. I'm a Wenger baby. I love creative football. I love, you know, I think 
play in the final third needs to be a gasmic. It needs orgasmic. It needs to be breathtaking. It needs to be entertaining. I don't think we've got that healthy randomness right now in the final third. I think Arteta is very scripted patterns of play. I like that, but I don't think there's that healthy randomness. But why do they want us to do it? Why, why do they say Arsenal are not entertaining? Who gives a flying monkeys about non-Arsenal fans being entertained about Arsenal Football Club? Because yes, not losing, not beating Liverpool is a bitter pill to swallow because we, we, we was winning, but we didn't lose. If we went out there and lost, would they care? Or would they sit there and say Arsenal played entertaining football? Would they chat shit? Would they say the same against Villa? Would they say the same against Spurs? Would they say the same against City? Especially with 10 men. I, and I, I will always take shots at Spurs. I don't want to be like Spurs, nine men, courageous. What does that mean? Where does that get you? Defence wins titles and we need to get back to our defensive st um, high standards. Goals win games and we definitely need to do better. Of course, you want both. You want both. You want to be, you know, Jose Mourinho's Chelsea side mixed with an Arsene Wenger, Pep Guardiola, Barca. You know, what we've seen on occasion with Arteta, breathtaking stuff in the final third. You want both, but there's a trade-off. If we are going to take the handbrakes off, then there's going to be, a, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but if we take the handbrakes off in an attacking sense, we're going to be a bit more open on the transition. We're already kind of open. For example, we play a high line. Now, naturally, you've got Declan Rice, you've got quick and strong players, you've got Saliba and Gabriel who are agile, but you know if you want to play a high line, you want to be in their half. You want to suffocate a team in their own half. You want to win the ball high up as, as, as you can when you lose it, and you want to just play football. But we know there's a trade-off. There's going to be occasions where the ball's going to get put in behind or we're going to kind of be vacant. A bit like the inverted fullback role. You know, mainly better examples when Zinchenko's playing there, but you know whether Tommy, Zinni, Timber, Califuri, we've got a lot of options, isn't it? If they're inverting, Gabriel's going to kind of have to worry about that kind of side indirectly. The left winger's job is to score goals and assists, but he's going to have to think, you know, at times there might be a question mark. And if Gabriel gets pulled over there, there might be a gap in the middle. And if Saliba isn't switched on, a striker might do a thing. Or you might have situations like you saw against Bournemouth where... Trossard's back pass led to Gabriel, uh, sorry, Saliba 1v1, decision to make. Obviously, he's got it all wrong. He's got sent off. So I'm not, again, in conclusion, a lot of the talking points are very valid where Arsenal are at, but there's too many hyper opinions. And the many people that are doing this, they've got vested interest, people. So in, conclu in conclusion, fuck the Arsenal haters again. Pardon my French people. I don't even know why I'm recording this video and whatnot. But yeah, man, I just wanted to say that. But on that note, let me know your thoughts. Peace. <laughs>